Hi, I'm Rich Keeble and welcome to... Hi, Rich Keeble here and um, yeah, welcome back to the documentary. It's it's real life events, so it's a documentary. So uh, it's my second day of my marathon training. If you joined me uh, for episode one, which was the last episode and was for a time the only episode until this episode was released, you'll be aware that uh, my first day was supposed to be cross training, but due to a bit of a mix up uh, involving a bike uh, and some lateness, I changed it uh, to a rest day. Now, uh, you could judge me for um, arguably uh, copping out, uh, making my first day of my marathon training a rest day. Uh, and, and to that, I would say, well, who are you to judge me? Who do you think you are coming into my flat and judging me on my... I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm regretting inviting you into my flat now. If, if I'd have known you were going to judge me like this, I probably wouldn't have. In fact, now that you have come into my flat and judged me, I prefer that you leave. Well, that's that's very gracious of you. Thank you. Yes, I, I would appreciate you leaving right now. Thank you. It, well, I, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure... Perhaps, yeah, perhaps there was a misunderstanding. I'm very sorry. Come round again some other time. Of course, another way of looking at it is that it's a brave move, you know, for someone who's training for the first marathon to make their first... Day of training, a rest day. I mean, that takes some guts, if you ask me. Real guts. Uh, but anyway, whatever your stance on the uh, day one rest day uh, controversy, uh, today is uh, going to be nothing of the sort because we have an easy run. Uh, so we need to run at an easy pace for 40 minutes and then we cool down. We have an option of, of selecting between five to 10 minutes and then that all important stretch. Yeah, so I'm gonna get out there. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been out for a run. Uh, so, and I've been a bit ill. Uh, I still sound a bit ill, in fact. Um, it's not COVID, but um, yeah, it, it's probably gonna be a shock to the system. So it's uh, six degrees Celsius out there. Uh, so quite cold. I'm gonna wear the Brooks Ghosts which are my kind of current training shoe, lovely and cushioned. I'm a fan of Brooks shoes because uh, they come in pairs, which I find particularly useful, because uh, there's one shoe for each foot. I'm gonna wear a hat and my long sleeve top, but I am gonna wear shorts. I suspect that I might get a little bit hot anyway in, in what I'm wearing, but uh, that's that. Uh, my heart rate does tend to get quite high quite quickly. But anyway, let's just go for that bloody run. Okay, let's go for this run. So, I'm out the door, which is uh, arguably one of the hardest things to do, just getting out there. Uh, first run in two weeks, I'm just sort of running a easy-ish sort of conversational pace. Um, as you can see, I'm having a conversation, albeit into a camera. So I'm currently running uh, just under six minutes per kilometre. Um, well, I'm at 5.48 now, which I guess is sort of in the easy zone for me. What's interesting, doing this uh, Garmin training thing on the watch, is that it's suggesting running by time rather than distance, which, you know, makes sense because uh, it's all about just time on your feet. I'm wondering whether this is going to be more motivating, having a time countdown on the watch than it is with the distance going up. It's a bit hilly, this road. Apparently, just said I'm in heart rate zone 4.6. I mean, uh, yeah, obviously I've had two weeks off and I've been ill. 
on the subject of heart rate zones, I've struggled a bit with those and I've had mixed success. So, um, I'm over halfway, you know, I've been running solidly for over 20 minutes. No headphones on today. Um, I couldn't be bothered with the faff. Uh, unfortunately, it means I have been alone with my thoughts. But uh, only another 17 minutes to go. Just uh, eight and a half minutes left. Of course, when I said I had run without stopping, that was actually a bit of a porky pie, because of course I'd stopped to set up the camera for a couple of shots. So that's the 40 minute run done. Um, it automatically went into the cool down section, uh, which can be as long as I want it to be. Um, so uh, maybe I'll actually try and stick to that, because normally I'll probably do about a minute. Uh, and that's mainly walking, but maybe that's too, uh, too abrupt a change in the pace. Anyway, I've been uh, cooling down for about two minutes now. So, uh, yeah, let's do a few more. So that was the uh, that was the easy run. Um, I was pretending to stop my watch in that last shot because I'd actually already stopped it and then come and set up the camera for that last shot for me to run into. A uh, little um, glimpse behind the curtain there for you. Uh, what's interesting there, of course, is that my training status was apparently none, which I've actually never seen before. I've I've seen it go from productive to maintaining to unproductive to recovery to detraining. Uh, but I've never actually uh, had my watch say no status before, so I guess that means that I'm completely uh, out of the fitness game. Anyway, so that was um, my first run in a while. Uh, be honest, it felt a little bit tough. I was sort of going at an easy pace, but obviously I was talking into my phone um, for a lot of it. Yeah, so let's have a little look uh, on Garmin Connect then. So here's the run here. Uh, I did 7.31 kilometres, uh, which I believe is about four and a half miles. Um, and my pace, uh, six and a bit minutes per kilometre, which I think is about a 10 minute mile. So quite casual. As you can see, my heart rate is quite high, 171. Although that's not that high for me. I, I fitted that run in just before uh, we went to Lytopia in Crystal Palace uh, with the kids. So um, that was kind of a, a mix of, of being quite nice and a complete disaster, as, as often things are when you go out with young children. But yeah, I mean, my heart rate is, I mean, on average, uh, 171. But yeah, it didn't take long for it to get up to um, 180. It's 185 there. So I was in my zone four, which you'd, you'd think that you wouldn't be for, for an easy run. And you shouldn't be, in fact. So I guess uh, probably because there were a little few little uh, hills on that route and um, just a bit unfit. FYI, my heart rate does actually get pretty high. Mine, if I'm really going for it, it does actually go up into the high 190s. But that seems to be normal for me. But my resting heart rate is about 47, 48, so... There you go. Or maybe I'll just keel over and die one of these runs. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, uh, most importantly, though, I burned 638 calories, uh, which uh, I think any scientist worth his salt or her salt or their salt 
Um, we'll tell you that's the equivalent to roughly two and a half pizzas, a Donamit kebab and uh, about three bottles of red wine. So that's a significant uh, amount that I've burned off there. And um, the eagle eyed of you will have noticed that I'm down for doing intervals tomorrow. Uh, I don't normally run uh, one day after the other, but that's suggesting a 10 minute warm up, then it's running at threshold pace for four minutes and then recover for 90 seconds and uh, yeah, do that four times and then a cool down. So um, look forward to that one. Uh, I've actually got my booster jab tomorrow and I'm taking the kids to a soft play in the morning. So I'm not sure when I'm gonna fit that in. So better get to bed, get some sleep and um, yeah, until tomorrow. So, uh, for those of you who uh, have got a bee in your bonnet about the fact that I started my marathon training with a rest day and then an easy run, well, you can eat your words with a side portion of sour grapes because today is intervals. Feeling a bit tired this morning and uh, also... I've not long got back from soft play uh, with my two girls. So that was all rather exhausting, to be honest with you. Uh, and now my wife's just got home and uh, I've got about an hour before I have to go out and have my booster jab. So um, I was umming and ahhing about whether I went and did this run before my booster jab, but um, I don't think I'm going to have time. Uh, ironically, if I wasn't filming this, I probably would have time. Uh, but also, I'm a procrastinator, so um, I think I'm going to just do my run after my jab before any ill effects kick in. Uh, now, after my, my previous two jabs, the following day, in each case, I was feeling pretty terrible. But those ill effects didn't start until later in the evening. So um, I think what I'll do is... I'll cycle over to um, the health centre, have the jab, come back. Maybe I'll go and pick up my new bike, uh, which uh, viewers of episode one will know that uh, hadn't been built. So I'll check that's done. Uh, and then I'll do the uh, the run after that. So um, I think that's the way to go. Uh, so yes, yeah, two o'clock now. Uh, my appointment for my jab is at three. So uh, I'm definitely not going to have time to go out for the run now. So I'll do it after my jab. Hi, it's me. Um, so uh, the, the latest is I've had my booster. Little uh, fun fact for you here. Last two times I had it in the left arm because they suggest you have it on your, your, your weak arm. Uh, but I sleep on my left side. So uh, this time I've had it in the right arm. There's a little tip for you. Well, not really a tip, it's just, it's just something that happened. Um, so I had the booster, I went home, uh, I had some moussaka for lunch. Um, then I ended up sort of playing with the children, uh, doing a bit of face painting uh, on my two girls. Uh, then I thought I'd come and get the bike uh, because it's actually, uh, it was ready this time, it's been built. Um, so I ended up doing about 17 minutes uh, on my return trip to get my booster and I'm probably going to do another 20 minutes now riding home so I'm thinking um, maybe that counts as a cross training day because the day so day one was supposed to be 40 minutes cross trainer which I changed to a rest day so maybe I could put today as 40 minutes-ish cross trainer and then move the intervals. Because I'll be honest with you, I don't really feel like doing those intervals. So, um, I didn't go for the run. Uh, got home on the bike, had some sort of tofu and veggie curry that uh, my wife had made then uh, because I was then home she went out to Lidl to get a few bits and pieces for our um, Christmas meal 
Uh, so then I was just with the kids, so I ended up sort of bathing the kids, and then my wife was way late because she had a phone call from her friend, whose brother's not very well, and then she came home, and then it was sort of kids in bed and that sort of thing, and then basically I was just too tired. But, I mean, I, I don't feel too guilty, you know, I don't want to be too hard on myself, uh, having said those reasons, e excuses, you might want to call them, having said them out loud, um, I feel... Uh, they are of sufficient weight to justify uh, my decision. Uh, you know, sort of combined with the fact that I have just had my booster and uh, my arm is a bit sore when I do that. I've just uh, moved my older daughter who went to sleep in our bed into her own bed and uh, it did, it did um, cause me a little discomfort. So all in all, a pretty successful marathon training plan so far. I think you'll agree. OK, thanks a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, so you get notified of the next video. See ya.